Sonny, the Voice of America correspondent, Sonny Young, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. And Sonny makes it rain whenever he comes on this show, and I love it so much. Thank you, Sonny Young. Let's get on with the show now. Welcome our guest in the studio, Tolu Olorumata, and he makes a return. Tolu, it's good to have you on the show. Great to be back here, Austin. It's yeah. been a while, but I'm uh, happy to be back. I know. Tolu, uh, Tolu this Tiger Woods story, how are you, how you telling it? Great story. Uh, Great story for Tiger Woods. You know, he lost it all. He went down. He had issues in his family, wow. uh, not just in his career, personal life. He lost his fortune and then bounced back. He's come close to doing it a couple of times. Last year was an example, uh, some series of mistakes earlier in the year, and it looked like it was not going to happen again. Mm. You know, some, even some pundits, a lot of pundits used to refer to him as a former golfer, yeah. even though he is still active. Yeah. And that tells you how much no one expected them to bounce back from this. Everyone just wrote him off. No one saw Tiger getting it done. People say, you know, you know what, Tiger? Mm. Just call it quit. Stop embarrassing yourself. For how long will you keep going? Be a legend. And 11 years later, wow. he wins his 15th Masters amazing. title. Amazing. It's an amazing story, an amazing feat. Yeah. And it's a story for everyone who's out there who's chasing dreams. You know, never mm. give up on your dream. Mm. Never give up on mm. your dream. It might be difficult. Yes, the road is always going to be difficult, but you keep chasing. This is a, an incredible story for Tiger. After losing it all, wow. after losing it all, coming back to win at that same stage where he made his name oh. to get his 15th Masters title, after 11 years, the Rory McIlroy's have come in. And you are able to do that. I mean, it's an amazing story. And we're just happy for, for Tiger Woods. I know. I know. That Tiger Woods story, it makes me go soft. That's how I can, can describe it. When I was trying to talk about it the next day after he won that Masters, it was difficult. And, and Tiger, Tiger, Tiger was trying to preach, but they didn't give him a podium. No <laughs> congregation. <laughs> nah. And he says, okay, I will do it with golf. Yeah. I'll tell the swing it up. what it is. That's, that's, what, that's what Tiger Woods <laughs> did. So he wanted to talk to the world and say, he doesn't care what you've been going through. That difficulty since 2005. I know it has killed you. Tiger says, no, no. Lots of injuries also. Yeah, I know, I know. What a story. Thank you so much. Take a bow, Tiger Woods. We'll continue to celebrate you and that story. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, what's going on in the UEFA Europa League? I'll tell you, and then we'll go to Abuja to play some handball. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back to tonight on Channels Television. Before we go to Abuja Studios, let's find out what's going on in the UEFA Europa League. You know when I started this show, I told you that it seems Chelsea, they were done in that game because at halftime, it was Chelsea 4, Slavia Prague 1. Look at, look at the scoreline now. It's 4-3. 5-3 on aggregate. Chelsea living dangerously in that one. Frankfurt 1, Benfica 0. Arsenal leading Napoli by a single goal at, um, away from home. Lacazette's goal in the 26th minute. Still the difference. And it seems like it's all over for, Val uh, for Villarreal as they're losing by two goals to nothing um, against Valencia. Wow, Tolu, European night of football. Wow, Chelsea. I mean, this is why we like European uh, competition. This is why we like continental competition. Uh, Chelsea, you would have thought it's done and dusted. 5-1 up on aggregate at halftime, only to come back and you're being reminded ah. that even on your own home turf, you can be hmm. shocked. You know, it's easy to become complacent when, you're, when you have such a humongous advantage uh, in your favor. And at the moment, I think the reality check has set in and they will have to prove their mettle now, which, of course, is expected of them. It's Chelsea a very experienced side, winners of the UEFA Champions League, winners of the UEFA Europa League as well, with a lot of experienced players in there and a great manager. So um, we expect them to see this off, but it's been a great contest so far. Yeah. And everyone who's seen that game will be absolutely hmm. enjoying it. I, I mean, it just reminds you of what we saw last night. No, it doesn't even go. No. <laughs> no. We didn't watch football last no, night. We, we saw basketball and football. We saw a modern-day classic. Austin, wow. four goals in the, in the opening 11 minutes of a football Crazy. game. I've never Crazy. seen it before. Don't worry. Don't, don't <laughs> rush it. We'll get into it. Let's go to our Abuja studio. The president of the Handball Federation of Nigeria, Samuel Ocheo, is standing by. Let's find out what went down. Uh, that's on the 19 championship in Kosovo and how the national teams they are preparing. Good evening, Sam. Welcome to Sports Tonight. 
Uh, good evening, Austin. How are you? I'm awesome. Good to have you on the show. Uh, let, let, tell me, what went down with the under-19 team that I went to Kosovo? <laughs> Austin, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, Kosovo was a great experience for the under-19 team. Uh, they came second, uh, best overall. Uh, as I mean, the Kosovo Championship was an intercontinental championship, so the champions of all the continent were present, mm. and they actually came second. Uh, they lost to Chinese Taipei in the finals. Uh, they lost by Lone Go. Uh. Uh, that, for me, was something that was very, very exciting and great. Um, we never, I mean, we never thought we could get there, and we got to the world stage and came second. So I think the whole, um, the humble community is still celebrating that, and um, everybody is acknowledging uh, the progress of the Nigerian team. We received a letter from the IHF president himself, signed by him, congratulating the Nigerian team and telling them they are a team of the future. So we're still in that euphoria right now. We're all celebrating it, and everyone in the handball community is excited. Awesome, awesome. Um, Sam, what's responsible for that performance? Well, I think it's boiled down to determination and preparation. Uh, we've been on this journey since uh, it was in March 2018. That was when we started the Zone 3 Championship, the IHF Trophy at the zonal level we won. Uh, we then went for the continental level in Kigali, which we also won. And so this was just the intercontinental stage. Uh, one other thing is that the team, they've been playing handball all year round. Uh, last year, apart from the IHF Trophy, they were also at the Youth Games. They were at the Nations Cup, in which they qualified for the World Cup. So they've been busy. They've been playing handball. They're doing what they love. And the, the lads themselves are very determined to succeed. And I think that's been the major difference in Nigerian handball since we came in as a board. Uh, the, the competitions have been taking place. They have been attending championship. And our handball has been improving generally. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. What about the under-21 team? What's their story? Okay.